Before diving into the Universal Camouflage Pattern Program, we wanted to demonstrate how far tent and camo technology has come since World War II with our partner, Lightfighter. Lightfighter is a veteran-owned business authorized by the DoD to sell their tents directly to the U.S. military. First, to experience the old military model for ourselves, we tried to build an actual World War II canvas pup tent, the same one our grandfathers used on the Western Front. The old tent was impossible to assemble and didn't offer much protection from the elements. Needless to say, we wouldn't have lasted a day in Grandpa's army. Lightfighter has improved every aspect of the military tent. It has eight possible configurations and double-walled ventilation designed to maximize airflow and reduce condensation buildup. Lightfighter also replaced the old aluminum pole set and converted to the new ghost bone ballistic fiber poles that are lighter, stronger, flexible, and wind resistant. Click the link in the description to get your entire company outfitted with the highest quality military tent on the market. We're going to actually try to get to the bottom of why the military had the nerve to choose the universal camo pattern in the first place. Was it some general making millions in kickbacks off the camo pattern, or is the true story more complicated than that? Okay, so I think the best way to kick this off is with a field demonstration, because it's easier to show than tell sometimes. Let's see if you're able to spot me in the forest before I get to the other side of the screen in my old UCP fatigues. Look closely though, and don't get discouraged if you can't spot me right away. Remember, I'm using all of my infantry army training from back when I was in. So there's tons of articles and videos pointing out how clearly terrible that type of camo is. Very few of the critics honestly go into what exactly the military's line of thinking was here. If we don't understand what they were attempting to do, then this shit might happen to us again. I don't want to just make fun of the UCP in this video, I want to attempt to understand what really led to the disaster here. So, in 2003, the army realized they were going to be fighting in very different environments that ranged from the desert to thick vegetation. And sometimes troops would be fighting through both environments in one area. This presented a huge logistics challenge for us. How do you keep track of which type of camo to give each soldier? There was also the new issue of dealing with how camo works against night vision goggles that they had to consider on top of all of this. Back in 2003, the military was still working on the Future Warrior program because they rightfully recognized how our technology was our greatest strength. It let us destroy armies that were three times our size. And they saw digital camo and they thought they had found another technological advantage that they could employ. Using the help of computers, it seemed that they could create an algorithm of patterns that would cheat the human brain. It could hack our visual systems and break up our ancient target acquisition systems that our brain relied on. Lieutenant Colonel O'Neill is considered one of the world's leaders on camouflage. He developed the popular and effective US Marine camo. He came up with the digital camo pattern way back in 1976 when it was originally called the dual pattern camo. The army was obsessed with having their own unique uniform, so they didn't want to copy the Marines. They tested the UCP and found it was better than the other 10 uniform camo patterns, and we all lived happily ever after, right? Wrong. The army didn't even properly field test the UCP. As the evidence shows, they never even released any proof of any demonstrations with it. So in fact, by the military's own studies back in 2003, they found that a camouflage pattern program named Desert Brush was most effective they learned that certain colors and patterns are less visible in night vision goggles than others. This was ultimately what I think had led to the disaster of the UCP. They picked the colors which performed best under night vision goggles. Then they cherry picked the digital camo pattern of small blocks because they forgot their camo fundamentals 101 class. When you toss together a bunch of different ideas that work well in different situations, that doesn't mean that those ingredients are gonna mix well together. Just because cannolis taste great and lasagna is delicious doesn't mean you want to mix them together. I found this quote from Lieutenant Colonel O'Neill. Quote, the pattern of squares, or whatever shape we use, is employed to model the texture of typical backgrounds using a mathematical function. It's easy to misunderstand the purpose and mechanisms of this kind of design, which is why so many measures that try to use the approach without insight fall short. End quote. Now, let's hear a quote from one of the soldiers responsible for the UCP. Quote, black is no longer useful on the uniform because it's not a color commonly found in nature. The drawback to black is that it's a color that immediately catches the eye, end quote. 
Hyperstealth.com goes into great detail about how black is actually a very useful color in camo design. Black does appear in nature. When your eye perceives shadows, it's seeing what it interprets as black. The important takeaway here is that people working for the army who were responsible for developing the UCP did not understand what they were doing. According to Lieutenant Colonel O'Neill, there are two visual systems that work to detect and recognize targets. The focal and ambient systems. Your ambient system is your lizard brain ancient way of seeing. It evolved before the focal system. The focal system is near the center of whatever you're looking at. Once something is detected, the eye moves the focal system to that spot, and that's how you focus on something. He developed his camouflage to have two distinct patterns to fool each of these separate systems. So at this point, you might want to blame Lieutenant Colonel O'Neill for the UCP. But he was actually very critical of the UCP. He gave a quote in an interview where he said, quote, desert designs don't work well in woodland areas and woodland patterns perform poorly in the desert. So this is Lieutenant Colonel's very political and diplomatic way of saying, you need to have two versions of the uniform. We should go easy on them here and remember the Army isn't the first organization to choose a subpar product. People mistakenly chose the Sega Genesis over the far better TurboGrafx-16 system. People chose VHS tapes instead of the higher resolution, better quality laser disc format. Camouflage patterns on military uniforms is a relatively new concept when you think about it. The first time the US Army ever even used camo patterns was in World War II with the frog pattern in the Pacific Theater, which was mostly used by the US Marines. So here we fast forward to 2008, and the whole army is using the UCP and they're complaining that they don't blend in anywhere. There were new problems, like the inseam of the pants always seemed to blow out every time you took a knee, and the cargo pockets could barely hold your blueberry flavored pop tarts without the Velcro constantly coming undone. An interesting article written by Rich Stowell for Medium might be one of the most forgiving articles ever written about the universal camo pattern. In the article, they make the case that the UCP was purposely meant to look very different from any uniform that the enemy could potentially purchase. The old BDU and DCU camo patterns had been in circulation so long by the time those conflicts in 2003 that the opposing forces downrange were frequently wearing the same uniform as our forces. According to some, this was a bigger problem in terms of friendly fire incidents than the problem of needing to blend in with your environment. The UCP and its messaging permeated into civilian life in a way that the military had never been able to do before. All you have to do is look at sports teams of the time. I remember the Mets wearing camo on their sports jersey to support the troops. How dare they? That's military cultural appropriation right there. Not sure what golf exactly has to do with combat, but if you want a UCP style golf bag, you can get one now. Finally, you can look cool while you golf, right? The case being made here is that if the military hadn't adopted the UCP design, it's unlikely that all of those civilian organizations would have co-opted the digital camo design. Representative Jack Murtha from Congress got hit up so many times by soldiers unhappy with the UCP, he finally went to his congressional buddies and they all forced the army to field a better camo pattern for Afghanistan. And this happened in 2010. The new pattern chosen was multicam but they couldn't hammer out an agreement with the owners of the pattern called Scorpion, made by Cry. So instead, they made their own pattern that is very similar to Multicam. How that's not breaching some patent or intellectual property theft, I don't know, but I assume it has something to do with the fact that it's the United States military doing the stealing. Here I am criticizing all these camo programs when I haven't even shown you my own design. Here's my submission for what the new next generation camo pattern should look like. Pentagon Please feel free to find my email in the description below and send me your offer for how many millions of dollars you'd like to purchase and license my camo pattern for, or alternatively, feel free to steal the design from me and do your own slight variation of it. If you guys like this video, then we'll also do another follow-up one on the future of active camouflage prototypes, which are the closest thing I've seen to an invisibility cloak. Remember, your unit deserves the best gear possible. Click the link in the description to get the Light Fighter Military Tent for your unit. It's the tent I wish I had when I was in. I'm Chris Cappy. Thank you for watching Task and Purpose Out.